Alpaca is the new cross-platform technology that allows ASCOM to reach outside of Windows across the internet to both Mac and Linux. Today, ASCOM provides communication between apps and drivers using a standard protocol and standard interface using the Windows COM technology. This limits today's ASCOM to the Windows platform. In 2018, Peter Simpson introduced ASCOM Remote. Remote provides connections between clients, programs, apps on one PC and drivers, standard ASCOM drivers on the other PC by piping the ASCOM calls and returns across the internet. It's important to realize that ASCOM Remote provides both sides of this. Unmodified Windows programs can connect across the internet using Remote to an unmodified Windows driver on another machine using the Remote piece on that side, and the two don't know they're talking over the internet. It's completely transparent. The protocol used between the clients and the drivers on ASCOM Remote has now been formalized and published. It's available for people outside of Windows to use to communicate in and out of Windows, both as clients and as drivers. So what this means is, with Alpaca, the reach of ASCOM Remote has been extended to other platforms and across the internet. But wait, there's more. The protocol itself, which consists of the very well-known, very mature ASCOM interfaces implemented as REST endpoints, and REST itself is totally Windows independent. It can be used between any two platforms that have capabilities for the internet and just about every language on every platform supports HTTP and REST, so it's platform independent and language independent. Windows doesn't need to be part of the equation. Stay with me now as we take a deeper look into Alpaca. For background, 20 years ago when we put out ASCOM, the idea was to open the ecosystem up to allow the um, apps on Windows to talk to equipment and equipment to be available to apps without having to have the two married. In other words, a new app could come out and instantly be compatible with existing equipment without the app developer needing to know much of anything about the equipment. And conversely, new equipment com could come out and be instantly compatible with existing apps. That was really, really important for astronomy software, that whole ecosystem to evolve, and it really has. So ASCOM's a huge success from that point of view. I need to point out that those interfaces, which I'll talk more about interfaces in a minute, but the interfaces themselves are, are really designed to support routine operations not maintenance stuff. So all of the little doodads that are inside these pieces of equipment that make them work better, that's all maintenance stuff or engineering stuff, you know, PEC corrections, pointing, uh, pointing correctors, that kind of thing. That's all to be set up ahead of time during installation or whatever. The ASCOM interfaces are there to support the actual um, routine operations of observing, moving the focuser, moving the telescope, stopping and starting the telescope tracking, that kind of thing. So just to keep in mind that there's nothing in the ASCOM interfaces to support device specific engineering things. Now, what I was saying about interfaces is anytime you have a distributed system and you want to design an ecosystem for that, it's the interface design that's the number one highest risk. You can start out with a set of interfaces and you'll find as they start to get used that they'll be refined and changed. And from an engineering point of view, interface design is the highest risk part of any distributed system. So interface designing, interface negotiation, all of that up front to lay the groundwork for a strong system is really important. The thing about ASCOM is 20 years later, they're very well proven. So for you, the design risk of adopting the ASCOM interfaces is very low. If you want to start off with a whole new set of interfaces and develop your own ecosystem, you risk being a lone voice in the wilderness, just to keep that in mind. So um, I'm going to put up a quick little diagram here. Okay. This gives you an idea of what ASCOM Remote is all about. And uh, this is where 
we are today uh, in production. You can get this on the web. This is the uh, place to get it right there on GitHub. Uh, the releases are there. Here they are. And uh, the code is there and you can download it. You can get your own copy of the open source, whatever you want to do. If you have an ASCOM application, something that speaks ASCOM, such as the Sky or ACP or Sequence Generator Pro, whatever, ASCOM Remote provides a conversion to REST and HTTP over the internet. And then there's another server that, that is part of it that you can start up and run in the background and provides all the interfaces to all the devices on this other PC. And there they sit, available from the internet to anyone who wants to come in over the internet from one of these clients. So basically, this is the technology that from Windows to Windows already has extended to be able to run them remotely. But the big key to all of this is that out here on the internet is a set of standards that is REST and JSON and the ASCOM interfaces implemented as REST resources. So you're using a very, very well-defined set of protocols and a very mature set of interfaces. So again, the risk technical risk of all of this is really low and it's here today. So if you have a device like a telescope mount or a focuser or anything else and you want to make that available to clients on other platforms, the Mac, Linux, whatever, uh, and by the way, those don't exist yet, but we have to start somewhere, right? There's chicken and egg problems. So we're starting with the egg here. Uh, but it will, you can load up ASCOM remote, fire it up and boom, there it is. You already make your device available to other PCs out on the internet or even in, you know, on your local network, but also, uh, it makes it possible for someone to develop a client or a driver on another platform and integrate with the existing ecosystem on windows. So it serves both sides. Thanks for taking the time to learn about ASCOM Alpaca. There's another video available which shows a rotator simulator implemented on a Raspberry Pi using Python on Linux being rotated from a totally unmodified copy of the sky running on Windows. If you're a developer, you may be interested in that video. It also shows the Python that was needed in order to implement that. So you can get a look at the magnitude of the task you may be looking at if you want to do this for yourself. Thanks again for watching.